having secured some poplar um, this is a block 10 inches by 10 inches by 4 inches thick cut on the uh, bandsaw and uh, you'll see uh, uh, the bandsaw round it's called a, a little ripper um, from stockroom supply this is a, a great little jig it um, enables the cutting of uh, bowl blanks out of uh, material and it's really accurate you'll see as I come to the end of this bowl get a little bit OCD on the the roundness of the blank realising of course it's going to be put onto the lathe and there's the blank ready to go G'day, John here. Welcome to my shop. Um, today I'm going to try and turn a bit of poplar. It looks uh, very similar to the pine. The, the grain is um, pretty well uh, close together. Not as wide as the grain that's formed on pine. This is, uh, it, it's hard. It feels hard. They say it's a soft wood, but um, see how we go when we start turning it. So anyway, no more uh, chat from me. Uh, let's uh, get stuck in. Cheers. and uh, using a half inch bowl gouge to rough out get it a little bit square and placed and the um, important thing here is of course keep your tools really sharp I've got a um, CMB wheel uh, for sharpening uh, the tools do a video of that later on on how to, how to do all that but um, right at this point most important to have uh, sharp tools marking the tenant I use a little uh, pointed scraper carbon scraper just to to uh, get the depth there and uh, draw you know get a delineation of um, the, the tenon shape and the bottom of the bowl Ramping the speed up of the video so we can get towards uh, the end um, of the uh, bowl, outside bowl shape. Um, half inch uh, bowl gouge doing the job well. Going to try and get a, a flat bottom um, but not the entire bowl bottom. Just, um, you know, maybe uh, a third foot shape. But, you know, I've got to say, turning this popular is um, quite easy. I mean, it is wet wood, but it's um, it's coming out really nice. I mean, it's like turning butter. It's very, very good. And I'm very surprised at um, how robust the, uh, the timber is, too. It's cheap to buy. I mean, I bought a 8-foot uh, uh, by 12-inch wide, 4-inch thick beam it's just been uh, cut and um, it was less than $50 so you can get easily 8 uh, to 10 bowl blanks out of that 8 actually so um, yeah, for $50 we're talking a couple of bucks for uh, each um, bowl blank so uh, a good way to go
as you can see, all's been turned around in the truck, turned and seated. Uh, still got that uh, tailstock pushed against the uh, bowl to keep it all balanced. Um, generally, like to um, hog out the uh, interior of the bowl. Um, usually with my uh, Hercules scraper, um, which is uh, takes it out really quick. But you know, this is the five eighths bowl gouge. It goes in and um, takes out the uh, the meat pretty quick. You'll see in a moment I'll take the tailstock away because um, I'm not going to go too close to the sides after getting the sides topped off. The sides have got to be uh, touched up really really quickly and then uh, you leave them alone or try to leave them alone. I'm guilty of going back there and regretting the fact that um, the bowl edge is starting to spin and one wobble. So you've got to sort of do it in one hit while you've got the uh, majority of material at the bottom holding the bowl together and uh, then leave the uh, the rim alone. As you can see now the bowl's getting now to deep. I go to around about a quarter inch bowl thickness on this one. I'm not sure about the uh, the poplar wood so leaving a little bit thicker than to the thinner side of things. You'll see here I did go back up to the edge. Couldn't resist myself from getting a, a better surface. Um, yeah, it's came close to where I want to be, it's a quarter inch. And you'll see here that I do start from the, the rim and go straight through with another last final cut. And then another final cut. And I may even go one more. It's, it's just... Uh, the joys of wood turning, you know, you just uh, take little risks and and it, it mainly does work out. Grain pattern in this bowl is quite good. I'm impressed. did use my carbide scraper on the bottom there. Um, I don't like taking the heels off of my uh, bowl gouges. Um, I'm uh, using the uh, negative rake scraper on that. It does uh, give it a nice finish on the bottom. Well, it does have a tendency to tear out scrapers and not as clean cut as uh, bowl gouges. go through the entire sanding process it can get a bit tedious but um, here we go sand sealer it's just homemade um, sanding sealer it just uh, caps off that wood it was at this point I didn't really know what I was going to do with the finishing on this I certainly seal it with some with a, some of this um, shellac and uh, uh, an alcohol mix um, just to get uh, that uh, the, the bowl surface all s um, sealed off um, I originally started out thinking I'd just leave it plain because the grain is quite, um, quite nice but you'll see in a moment that uh, I changed my mind with the uh, sanding pads just take off that um, surface of the sanding sealer go up to uh, 320 grit on this particular sand 
didn't need much more than that, it was quite smooth, no tear out, the surface was uh, very very smooth indeed. Yeah, I use Axe Abrasive on most of my projects. It really does finish off nice. And it does change the colour of most of the timbers, but in a positive way. This is really brings up the the surface. And it was a, getting close to the thought I'll be finishing off with probably uh, friction polish or something just to get a bit of sheen on. Um, but uh, they went in an entirely different direction. So out came the rubber gloves, and it's at this point I decided, hmm, it'd be nice to see if we can uh, ebonize the wood. So out came the black ink, and this stuff is an amazing use. You now when it goes to the, the, the bowl, it's just, at this point I thought, hmm, maybe I've made a little bit of a mistake, black. But, you know... <coughs> It is what it is. You can't go back unless you want to um, return the surface and take away the black. So I thought I'll press on and see how it how it all turns out. So I put in uh, a first coat of the uh, the black ink, and um, then you brush it off, uh, well, wipe it off at speed on the lathe with a uh, lint-free cloth, and then I'd give it a, a second coat so that it it, it fills the um, areas between the grain and leaves the grain in more black so you're still not covering the grain, grain entirely it, it highlights it is what I, the word I'm looking for so it uh, comes out quite quite um, appealing um, as you'll see in the video and I get a makeshift um, lays protection just out of some cardboard box um, because I'm going to use uh, New Hampshire's or Hampshire's Sheen it's a spray lacquer as the finishing and you don't see it in the video here but um, I uh, gave it at least 10 coats for it to come up with a nice gloss the good stuff about this Hampshire Sheen you can spray one coat um, leave it 10 minutes and spray another another 10 minutes so it's just layering each coat um, without having to wait hours between um, that is just brilliant you know, I'm getting impatient trying to do this with um, you know one coat and waiting a day and coming back again it's uh, it's got brass knobs this way is much much better so this is you'll see the final product now I just uh, gave all that uh, 10 coats didn't want to involve you in looking at all that. This is just a um, a wooden bowl blanket with some foam on the end. Uh, use it as a uh, pressure hold for the uh, taking the foot off uh, bowls, etc. As you'll see here. So there's a bowl with ten coats. Came out really looking nice, and I'm quite happy with the uh, the outcome actually. The black ink ebonizing turned out really really well. Um, so what I'm going to do here is just take off that foot and uh, sand it down a little bit to uh, give it the final look and feel. Half inch bowl gouge. Just using a uh, pull cut against that 
um, foot comes off really, really easily. I try to get um, the, the bowl base or the foot uh, concave so that uh, when my uh, badge goes in on the bottom, it doesn't protrude past the uh, the level of the foot, which can make the bowl unstable. So, But then <coughs> once I start making a little concave, I've got to be sure not to go too deep because the bottom is pretty thin. And uh, I have to drill in about an eighth of an inch and another eighth of an inch for the uh, force and a bit. Sometimes I've had it go through the bottom of the bowl, which is not a good thing. the bottom of the bowl finished off with a bit of axe decided to leave it um, just the vanilla um, grain on the bottom so it can give uh, the idea that it's uh, um, you know an ebonized bowl um, yeah I mean it's been a pleasure of doing this particular one you'll see some stools after the uh, the video of the end result um, I do take off that little nub there, of course, and put my uh, badge at the uh, the foot of the bowl. Um, so, thank you all for joining, and um, hope you uh, catch up on my next video, which uh, will be soon. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.